morning. I'm gonna take you on a little journey with me today, guys. Guys and girls. There's a few, we've got three, we got. So I've got a few things going on over the next couple of days. One of them is quite a big thing and let me just tell you, okay. So today I'm going to a summer solstice event with my partner, meeting my sister there. We're going to see Nick Mulvey. It's going to be a 24 hour event, but we're not going to stay there for the whole 24 hours. And then later on they're doing a fireside session with Ajit. I can't remember who the other one is. And then tomorrow, <laughs> girls, tomorrow, I have an operation to find out if I've got endometriosis. I've never talked about this on my channel because I've always been unsure, but then sure that I've got it because of the suffering that I go through when I have my period. I usually suffer so much that I have to take time off of work. I cannot get out of bed. I nearly pass out. It's usually the first 24 hours. It's not usually past that time. If I stand up for too long, I literally feel like I'm gonna faint. and sometimes feel like I'm gonna be sick. My periods are so bad and it's been a thing that has been stressing me out for like the longest time. I actually ended up speaking to the doctors myself and requesting this surgery, which is a laparoscopy, I think. I'm probably gonna start probably saying that wrong, but a, a laparoscopy. Anyway, they do keyhole surgery. They put a camera down around your womb to find out if there's any endometriosis scarring on the outside of your womb. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm really, really nervous. I'm really nervous about it, but I'm really excited about the fact that I get to experience this nice festival. It's absolutely fucking gorgeous day. So I know I'm gonna be bedridden for the next few days. So I'm really glad that we're doing this the day before and I get to do it with my partner. So it'll be really interesting to see how he finds it. They'll go in with the keyhole surgery. They'll find out if I've got endometriosis if they find out that I've got it, then they will operate to remove whatever they can. But I've suffered with bad period pains from like the very, very get-go. So I'm really intrigued. I'm gonna be very confused if I don't have it because of the level of pain that I move through. But I feel like there's always this like level of doubt because you're always told externally that like, oh, it's just a bad period pain. But like when it's like debilitating where you cannot literally get up out of bed, you have to cancel plans, you can't even go to work. That's when it seems like it's a problem. Like that's not normal to me. I don't think that is normal because like everyone in that office that I work with don't seem to struggle like I do and there's only a select few people that I know that literally have to be in bed. I've got like a device that you put onto your womb space called my UV and that sends like pulses to your womb when you're on your period and it helps stop the period pains a little bit and then I usually drink valerian root tea which I can honestly say is like the best thing that used to help me get through the pain but it has to be like the pure natural valerian root which I get from Glastonbury. Always have hot water bottles on hand. I wouldn't take any medication and that was the thing that the doctors used to push me away. I have gone to the hospital a few times about pain that I'm in has been worrying and they've just gone oh have you taken any medication I've said no and they've gone right well I'm just go and take a paracetamol just go and take an ibuprofen and I'm just like that's just like putting a plaster over the problem it's not actually fixing it it's a weird one it's a weird one when it affects your life that's when you think, mm, okay, maybe I need to question whether it's something else. Hence the reason why I'm getting this operation to find out if I've got endometriosis. And I'm really nervous, I can't lie. I haven't ever had an operation where they've had to cut into me. Yeah, I'm just a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm just a little bit nervous. So anyway, so come along, you'll meet my partner. I'm gonna go do some yoga in the garden now because it's just such a nice day. And I was like, I have to get outside and do some stretching. I haven't done any stretching for ages, by the way. Rodrigo and Gabriella is also on tonight and I don't know who they are so I've just listened on Spotify to one of their songs. Listen to this. Makes me want a Spanish dance. This is my hot version. If you watched my video the other day, I 
do my iced coffee version of this. Usually when I make this, this is what I do first. Second day, iced coffee. Yes, yummy. Right, guys, guys, girls, girls, guys, guys, guys. So I need to, today, I feel like I've got so much to do that it's already like 12 o'clock, like what the hell. I am gonna do some editing for the video that I'm posting on Sunday because I'm gonna be having this op. I don't know how comfortable I'm gonna feel sitting up and editing. So I'm just gonna try and like block a window out and then, um, oh my God, stop it. I just realized I've had that playing the whole time. But yeah, I look a mess. Oh, but like my face is really dry just you know when you're like full of hay fever and you're just constantly wiping your nose like that is literally my life i just blew my nose and i had a piece of fucking grass come out of it so oh you know almost aesthetically pleasing mug but it's, i really love drinking my coffee from it because it's just so big i love a big coffee What's the point in getting all fancy, you know? I like to be comfortable. This is me being comfortable. Mm. Oh my God, I absolutely love that. So yesterday, let's bring you closer. Come, 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 come. So yesterday I made a manifestation board because I realized that I haven't actually done any manifestation for a while. Sometimes it's nice to like sit and purposely think about like what it is that you want to call into your life, all of that kind of stuff. I haven't done that for a while. I used to be, really big on manifestation but i just haven't done it for ages so yesterday i made a wallpaper for my home screen this is what i want to call into my life should i show you it's a little bit oh i don't know if i should show you because like maybe i'll just do a really really quick like you can see it from us like really quickly okay no more <laughs> do you know what it actually got me thinking i was like i haven't thought about what i want to call into my life for a really long time actually so it gave me a really good opportunity to really sit with it some of the things i've got on there i've already got but I just want it to continue. Just putting some affirmations on there, holding myself accountable for some things. Like there's things I've got on there, a girl going for a walk and a girl meditating and a girl stretching. And the reason I've put that on there is I used to be so good with that, but I've kind of like fallen off track for a while. I just want to put it on there to be like, right, okay, this is what we're going to do. Because I'm pretty much on my computer every single day. When I open it up, I can see, oh, have I done that today? No, so let's do it. It's not just a manifestation board, but it's also a daily reminder as well. I'm ready, pretty much. Oh, what do you think? Oh. Oh, I'm just getting the last little touches on myself. And then I need to make the cacao. And then we need to go. Chad is already here. He's downstairs watching the football with my dad. Just been rushing, really. Took quite a bit of time making my video. And I've done my skincare. Just done my hair, so... I haven't scrunched out the crunch yet. I've got this operation tomorrow and Chad's got work, so... We kind of need to make sure that we're not too late. How do I look? Um, I'm gonna take this to wrap around me at some point. Let me have a look. I don't think that goes well. Mm, God. Of course, I forgot about this, but I don't know how to change the top now. The only thing with this kind of shows my nipples. Oh, goodness. Oh, I'm interrupting. Just, uh, okay, well, da, 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 da. I've got a, <laughs> an England match to watch. <laughs> Go on then. So, uh, <laughs> Stop trying to encourage me to do ugly fans content. <laughs> right, I'm taking this top off. All this. <sighs> Getting annoyed. No. This might be controversial. I'm going for all the oranges. I don't know, <laughs> they're all different colors, but I just, I don't know. There's just something about it that I like and I'm excited for. I think this is what I'm gonna go for, guys and gals. After that, you can plant. I need different shots. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Mischievous. <laughs> Who, you? You and your... Toe. You're talking about my toes all touch the ground and you can notice I've been practicing so you can never, you can never comment to me again. You've been practicing. Fuck you, <laughs> fucked at me. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. We love you. Feet, so look, see, they all touch the ground. See? You see that? You see that? Alright? Well, you've got great feet, see? You see I that? Like your feet. You see that? We're all touching the ground, okay? We're all touching the ground right now. Sometimes we're chilling, sometimes we're not. We're no longer chilling anymore. We're all touching the fucking ground, okay? <laughs> Alright. They're all touching the ground, okay? What the hell are you doing? This is weird. 
We're gonna have a great time, babes. We're gonna oh, have a great time. One of us is gonna have a great time. What do you mean? One of us will have a reasonable time. <laughs> Are you a bit nervous? About what? Going amongst witches? There's no witches and, and druids there. I'm nervous that the Lord Jesus Christ, my my savior, will strike me down, having walked into a midst of folk who are calling in sorts, all sorts of solstice stuff. Huh? What intentions are you doing? Should bring my fucking Bible. It's oh, like the final, okay. final like last footage. I've seen Blair Witch Project. I know how that feels. Why are you so nervous? He's nervous. Yeah. Around. He's nervous about this festival. Amongst. Day fest. Amongst a group of witchy, spooky. Don't people listen to my dad. In the woods. Don't listen to my in dad. In the woods. <laughs> Blair Witch. You've been there already. Remember. I've seen Get Out. I've seen Blair Witch. This guy. Honestly. Pretty much anything that involves a black person. The only ethnic person I miss. All these crazy folk who happen to be white. Black guy never comes out unscathed. Definitely person never comes out unscathed. It's unscaped. not just white people there, babes. You'll, you'll see. All I'm saying is, pop culture dictates the black guy always dies first. I am not going to have that happen to me today. You're being so dramatic. <laughs> You're being so dramatic. It's a thing. All right, you go talk to any Christian person and tell them go stand in front of some fire amongst some people dancing around shouting incantations and I'll be like, what? Okay, okay. you're definitely being <laughs> dramatic. I'm making it seem a bit more crazy in your head than you might think. Really? Yeah, come here. Was that so? I've got the cream stuck in good. Just trying to, you know, leave some uh, break time slash signposts for if I go missing, people know who I was. Oh, I'll be all right. You look so excited to be going out with me right now. Yeah. So excited. Mm -hmm. Just don't guys. look too excited, babe. Remember me, guys.
I'm very grateful for the memories last night, especially around the fire, because I can hold on to that today, because I can't lie, I am nervous. Last night when I was around the fire, I had a moment where I was like, oh my gosh, I've got an operation tomorrow. I was like, oh shit, oh yeah, I forgot. So yeah, I'm a bit nervous. It's like going from one extreme to the other, isn't it? I'm, I'm going from like beautiful, chilled, positive vibes to like hospital <laughs> operation. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> it'll be fine. It needs to be done, it needs to be figured out. And I was thinking about this last night and I was like, <sighs> imagine if I go and get this operation done and they say, you haven't actually got endometriosis. I don't know how that's going to make me feel, but then if they do operate and say, you have got endometriosis, then that's going to be like, fuck, okay. One, I'm glad I know, but two, obviously it's like, shit, okay, this is something that I have to like deal with for the rest of my life now. But then like, if they operate and they say you don't have it, I would feel a bit like, what? Like, why am I getting such bad pains? It's just a weird feeling. I won't feel great about either or, I think. Obviously it'll be a massive relief if I don't have it, but then I would be questioning why my pains are so excruciating. If you've been thinking that you've got endometriosis for like the longest time, like myself, and then you go ahead and get the operation, it, it, it's just a weird feeling. I can't explain it. It's like a catch-22 type thing. So yeah, <sighs> be alright. Be alright. Make sure you have a supply of pain relief, such as paracetamol, ibuprofen. I took one paracetamol and one ibuprofen for the first time in I'm gonna say like six years since probably 2018. The other week because I scratched my eyeball and I had to go to hospital because it literally was like the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my eye till six. 30 a.m. you can drink water, still not sparkling fruit, or black coffee, but no drinks with milk. That means that coffee I'm gonna have to drink. After 6.30 a.m. please do not drink anything. Shit. Not anything, not even water. If your operation is in the afternoon, oh, okay. Before 7 a.m. on the day of surgery, please have a light breakfast or cereal toast. After 7 a.m., please have nothing to eat, including chewing gum, no drinks containing milk. Until 11.30 a.m., you can drink water. After 11.30, please do not drink anything. Okay, that's fine, so I can drink water. If you do not stop eating and drinking when asked to do so, we may need to delay or cancel the operation. Let's just do it's just the coffee, like, I don't understand that. I haven't even read this, that's really bad, isn't it? It's classic me admission letter. Oh my God. This, I have so many letters, I don't know. I don't know. It's actually overwhelming. Oh my God, and it's stressing me out. I've done that one. This is it. This means nothing to me, looking at that. Where am I going? That's what I need to know. It doesn't say. Synopsis, um, I have to use a secure, oh no. I need to shower. I feel stressed. I actually feel stressed. Guys, I'm not, I'm not excited. I can't, I'm not gonna act like I'm fine. I'm right.
coming back from my op. I'm not going to talk about it right now because I'm a bit slow and still a little bit high from all the medication that they gave me. I'll check back in with you guys once I've had a proper kip and I'm feeling a lot more like myself again because I am in a bit of pain and I'm short of breath because of the gas that they put in your stomach to inflate it up. I'm a little bit delirious at the moment, a bit tired, so yeah. Peace. Oh, please don't... Please don't mind my hair. It's been a few days since my operation. When I came out of my operation, I was just so emotional. I think because I was told, obviously, I did have endometriosis and I was just in so much pain. I didn't actually expect to be in that much pain waking up from the op. They put me on so much medication as well and I'm just not used to that because I don't usually even take paracetamol if I'm in pain. So I was just really, really dosed up and I couldn't breathe very well. There was a lot of pressure on my chest because of the gas that they put into your stomach to expand your body out because I was in a lot of pain I just couldn't stop crying I tried to go to the toilet I was pissing blood because apparently they cut part of my urinary tract which I don't think they were supposed to do it doesn't hurt to pee I've been told to take two weeks off I'm still waiting on the doctor's note from the hospital the mornings are always a lot worse than the rest of the day just because all the medication is worn off and they only just said just take paracetamol or cocodamol so I first was taking paracetamol when I got home but it wasn't enough Enough, so I started taking cocodamol and that definitely helped. Saturday morning was really emotional. I was very upset just crying a bit and just a bit overwhelmed and stressed. Obviously again I couldn't breathe very well. I've had this pressure on my chest since the op. It's gotten a little tiny bit better each day but I am still short of breath and still struggling with that but it's just right in between my chest here. It just feels very very heavy and like it feels like I've got pressure being put here. I think it's just an overwhelming feeling of a lot of things. It's just a weird thing to be told that you've got endometriosis when people just try and convince you that you've just got really bad period pains and deep down you know there's something not right. So it was this bittersweet kind of like feeling. Chad's been here for a couple of days. He's basically looked after me as much as he could. Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. Friday when I got home from the hospital I just didn't have any kind of energy i was just laying there i was just like oh my god i was still feeling really like fragile and i just remember falling asleep really early i had to sleep with a pillow between my legs because that was the most comfortable getting up and walking i kind of have to walk quite slow and make sure my body's quite straight ladies if anybody's watching this and you've been through the process of like wondering whether you do have endometriosis or not based on your level of period pains and other things in your life then if you want me to do a sit down talk video about that then i'm more than happy to because I know the struggles and the pains so if anybody wants me to just kind of talk about that and talk about my symptoms as to the reasons why I thought I had endometriosis because I've been thinking it for a while it just used to really annoy me when people would just say just don't think about your period pains because it'll just make it worse I'm like you have no idea how hard that is to do that like the frustration of telling me to not think about the pain I can't even drive because I feel like I might pass out when I'm driving and you're telling me to not think about pain okay <laughs> just like oh my god you have no idea it's just so frustrating it gets to a point where you're just like i'm not even going to talk to you about it because you don't get it you just don't get it it's not just a painful period it's so much more than that and um and lo and behold i was right today i have to brave getting a shower they said that i can't shower for a couple of days so today i need to shower and just be very gentle on my body i'm a little bit nervous about it but i know it's gonna be fine i just have to be very gentle this experience has really actually made me realize so much how much i struggle to ask for help it's been a really interesting experience to witness myself in literal pain not wanting to say oh please can you get me this because i just don't feel comfortable doing it so it's been really really like eye-opening for me witnessing myself in that space of like oh i don't want to ask for this because i just feel like i'm being a nuisance and it's like you have literally just come out of an operation you need to lie down you cannot get up and do this and that it's been a real experience to say the least getting up and going to the toilet is so much effort just walking to the toilet is a lot going downstairs to the kitchen is a lot just getting a drink it's just a Lot. the thought of standing and having to make something to eat i just can't do it one thing i will say i'm just wearing this because it doesn't catch on anything you don't want it getting caught on your cuts or your wounds hey everyone so i'm just getting ready to go to the doctors it's the next day i felt very dizzy past 24 hours really really struggling with lack of energy just you know how it goes hoping that they help me figure out what's going on i don't know i feel like they're just going to turn around to me and be like you're fine you just need to keep resting righty rah mostly going there because of the tightness in my chest and the shortness of breath my discharge letter from the hospital saying that if you've got shortness of breath 
and tightness in your chest then you need to go to the doctors and i've definitely had shortness of breath it's been one of the things that i have like been struggling with the most to be fair um but yeah today oh i got up i went to the toilet i was just in the bathroom and i was like oh just about brushing my teeth and stuff and i was just like i feel really faint i feel really really faint i had to sit down for a moment i feel faint now to be honest but it's so hot today like the last couple of days it's just been so hot i'm just I'm not myself you know i just felt quite weak and drained and short of breath and it's all a bit much man <coughs> oh hey loves so i've just basically spent most of the day since coming back from the doctors just here again just in bed i've noticed that every time i have stood up today since being to the doctors and stuff i have had some bleeding apparently it's normal the only time i feel okay is when i'm lying down and when i stand up and walk around i don't feel right so i'm gonna check back in when i feel much better because i feel like it's just gonna be the same repeat every day pretty much so i'm just gonna check back in when i feel good I've been watching a couple of videos today about girls that have had the laparoscopy because I just needed to get some answers on like this bleeding situation but apparently it's normal and you can bleed up to like a month after surgery so I was so unprepared for this surgery. I want to talk in another video about my process of deciding to get the surgery and how I managed to just get it in the end because it wasn't an easy process and it wasn't a quick process. Obviously in the UK it's different to the US because because it's on the NHS. Because of that, it's always quite difficult to get things like this. You have to really push. It's actually the sixth day after surgery and I am cramping in my womb and I haven't cramped like this in my womb space since I've had surgery. So I just feel like I need to lie down all day. And some videos I've been watching of women and they've just been up back to normal in like the fifth day. And I'm just like, I can't do that. I genuinely don't feel like my insides have healed, especially with my bleeding. It's not just spotting, like it's actual blood. So that's concerning to me because I just think maybe I moved about too much in the house yesterday and that's why I'm having more bleeding. So today I'm just like, I just literally feel like I need to lie down all day and just take it as easy as possible. All that time, I feel like I was fighting for people to understand that it wasn't just a period pain, it was more than that. And now I've got answers. It actually gets me a bit angry because I'm just like, the way I had been spoken to by one of the doctors when I requested for the surgery, I was actually shocked and she was a woman. People with endometriosis happen to just suffer, just, just happen to suffer. And that's just unfortunate, you know? The pain that I was in with just a small amount, I cannot even imagine what women must feel when it's spread in more areas. My heart goes out to you ladies because I'm just like, I can only imagine I, I was in so much pain with just that small amount that they found. Ladies, I feel you, I really do. It must just have been so hard to, to have to cope with that. I just wanna say that I see you and I feel you and I hear you and just make sure that you do all that you can to take care of yourself. Don't let anybody, doctors, other people gaslight you on what you're feeling because you are feeling pain people need to understand that and support that if people don't or oh, just don't even get me started because today i'm feeling angry about it because i'm just like why why is why why do women not get heard so just a little update i am eight days post-op it's been an interesting day today because yesterday and the day before that i spent as much time as possible lying down basically as much time as possible because i noticed that when i was moving about i would start feeling more pain start feeling more uncomfortable start feeling a bit dizzy a little bit nauseous so I made a point of just being still led down for as long as possible. I was just playing Xbox for like the past two days, which really got me glued to my bed, which helped actually. So today I'm just kind of a bit tired of playing it. So this morning I got up and thought, I'd, let me just pamper myself again, because I really need to just feel like I need to take care of myself. We had a shower, washed my hair, did my skincare, which is my new obsession. And I didn't feel good after that. <laughs> I thought I was going to be all right, to be fair. I literally thought, okay, I don't feel too bad because I've been lying, lying down. Like, I've been lying still. 
for the longest time so much so that my ass is hurting because i've been laying on my fucking ass all day i haven't had an appetite today really at all i've just only managed to at five o'clock eat a bowl of pasta that's all i've had today a bowl of pasta and a cup of coffee anyway the update is i've noticed i'm okay when i'm lying down but when i'm up and moving about i'm not that comfortable and this is going to be tmi by the way i still am bleeding a little bit i'm just, i'm like spotting and this is something that i was trying to find through the internet through youtube whether other girls were having the same experience whether they were bleeding and to be honest not many girls talked about that but the bleeding for me has happened more often they told me that my endometriosis that they found was by my rectum that's what they told me because you can't see what's going on in there it's hard to judge how well it's healing and i've noticed that when i get up and move about a bit more i just found that even that alone was quite tiring and i started noticing like twangs in my my body i went and sat with my mum and dad for a bit and chatted with them and i noticed that i was getting these like pulling sensations these sudden twangs in the area from above my belly button down to like my womb area i wouldn't personally feel comfortable to walk two minutes down the road i don't think at this stage eight days in you should be lifting anything heavy personally because anytime i reach up to get something from the top shelf in the kitchen that feels like it pulls if i pick up something that's a little bit heavier i'm noticing that i'm tensing my muscles that feels a little bit painful but it's not painful on a scale of like i cannot handle it the pain kind of comes afterwards i can just feel in the moment that i'm not feeling strong i feel like fragile i feel quite tender the only thing that i have been struggling with is getting a doctor's note now you can apparently legally sign yourself off for seven days after an operation this is in the uk obviously but then you request a sick note on the seventh day for another week because the hospital told me i needed two weeks to take off people that i spoke to have needed two weeks to feel fully recovered i've literally been thrown from pillar to post about this the hospital told me that they would send me a letter in the post that should come on monday nothing's come and that was more than a week ago i then ran the doctors got a doctor's appointment booked in to actually physically go and see them and and then after I got off the phone to request an appointment with the doctors, the hospital called me. I told them about my symptoms and how I was feeling and requested a sick note. They told me to ask the doctors. So when I actually went in for my appointment, I told the doctor. She then told me I can't get a sick note off of her. I need to ask reception to speak to two specific doctors that can hand out sick notes. I went to reception. She then told me to request for the sick note in the NHS app. So I've done that and I've still heard nothing. And it is the most infuriating thing. It's Saturday today today i'm gonna have to wait until monday i have mondays off work anyway they were saying that they don't provide sick notes until you have seen how you feel on the seventh day and then you request it through the app that's one thing you should just provide with an operation you have an operation you get a sick note that's what happened when i had my tonsils out i got signed off for two weeks so yeah that's just one thing that's been really bugging me the problem with the uk is that they've put everything online now so the way to book an appointment is through an app you can still call the doctors it's so hard to get an actual appointment so for them to just provide a sick note i'm not surprised to be honest but i just personally think that they should provide it you can tell how infuriated i am because i'm actually getting aggro over what i'm talking about i can feel the frustration coming through me and i bet you can feel it too but for fuck's sake it shouldn't be hard you should just provide it on the day give it to the person on the day to take home with them i feel like that's a really really long rambly update about it i thought i was going to close the video off and i didn't did i it's all good it's all good we're healing we're moving we're healing feeling better hello my love so we're actually in the present tense right now i've just been sat editing this video and realized that i hadn't really done like an end recovered part of the video so i was like let me quickly do that now so i'm just going to do my skincare while i talk to you because i really need to do it i feel like this has been giving me spots i usually use this beauty by jocelyn toner which you can see and i've actually got another bottle of this because it was so good so that is a staple now but this rice toner we're not going to rule it out just yet the last footage that you just watched was my eighth day today is sunday we are literally over two weeks post-op i definitely started feeling better by the end of last week the only thing i was noticing i was due on my period so i started getting like quite crampy my womb was quite sore it was quite crampy so the wound just above my womb space like like my pant line for example that's like nicely healed but the one that i have here 
that one had been giving me a bit of issue. I didn't realize that they actually stitched that one. The other day I realized that the scab was still there. It was quite big. It looked like it was healed, but the scab was just kind of like holding on. So I actually had a shower and just kind of gave it a rub and the scab come away. When the scab come away, a bit of a stitch came away with it. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, but it's starting to heal now. So yeah, my period hasn't been too bad. I was cramping quite a bit yesterday. I'm bleeding a little bit more than I usually do. Last night I had to go to bed with a hot water bottle. I can't assume that my period is just like, it's so much easier now because I've been on the contraceptive patch and that has been helping with period pains. I only went on the contraceptive patch probably about three months ago and it's definitely helped with period pains. I've got a check-in appointment with my gynecologist who done this operation in three months time. So I've decided to come off the patch, just track my basal body temperature, let myself have a period without the hormones because the hormones in the patch have been helping me with the pains like massively and i'm not usually an advocate for like that kind of stuff but uh, sometimes you just make different choices in life and this is just that phase of my life but yeah so i just want to see what my body's like without help basically so i can tell whether this operation has actually assisted in the period pains that's why a lot of people end up getting the operation because they want less pain when they're having their monthly bleed so the next couple of months i'm just going to be back to that it'll be quite interesting to see how i feel as well actually but yeah so i actually feel all right i feel good i feel so much better i am still bleeding today but i feel a lot better than i did yesterday i feel like i just had a few moments where i was like oh i do feel a bit crampy and stuff like that but i'm at this point now where i'm just like i really can't wait to just get outside and go for a walk i'm like desperate to go for a walk i feel like i've been stuck in these four walls for like two weeks straight three times in two weeks i have been out this house <laughs> so you can imagine i'm like getting itchy feet and i have been sat there daydreaming about forest walks and everything like that so i'm really really desperate to get outside actually no i'm gonna put this on but yeah so all in all i use a lot of beauty by jocelyn's products and i can honestly swear by them they're fucking amazing I like a bit too much on this side i feel so much better I'm really glad that I went ahead with the operation. My wounds have pretty much healed, I would say. I can actually see stitches sticking out the side of one of my wounds, which is the one here, which is a bit weird. Well, now I can see like the actual stitch, so I'm hoping that actually does go away. Uh, other than that, ladies, I'm actually okay. I feel like you definitely need two weeks off. 100% take two weeks. You just need to let your body rest as much as possible because you don't want to cause more damage. Endometriosis is one of those scars that like grows and grows and grows. So like you don't want to cause more damage because you've had that taken away. You want to just let your body be as still as possible for as long as possible. So if you can take those two weeks, definitely do it. But all in all, guys, I feel like the experience was all right. You could tell, obviously, I was getting a bit frustrated towards the end. But it's just one of those things where I think you're just like in bed and you've just got so much time to think about everything and evaluate so much. It's Sunday today. I'm adding this to this video today, posting it today. But whether it actually goes out today or on Monday will be all down to my Wi-Fi because my Wi-Fi is shit. I have had so many issues with it. It takes all day sometimes to post one video and it's honestly the most frustrating thing. So a lot of the time when I do a video and it's like ready by Saturday, sometimes like it can take all day on Sunday to upload. So then sometimes it just doesn't fully work and I have to re uploading it again on Monday. So you can imagine it's like super frustrating. So yeah, that's kind of the story in Balamori. I'm just very, very happy to be back at it again and feeling good. I definitely, definitely was getting tired of being in this house. I had like mad FOMO yesterday because everyone was out and I could see like all my friends were out. The sun was shining and people were just busy doing things and I was like, oh. But I'm really glad that I had my period when I did because I am literally coming out into the world on the phase of my cycle where like I'm coming off my period. So I'm feeling really like energized and good. How amazing is this lipstick though? It's not even really a lipstick. It's like a lip balm that enhances your lip color. I love it. It's black honey and you can see like it just makes your lips pop. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for some ladies. As I've said before in this video, if you're interested in wanting to hear more about my journey to finding out if I've got endometriosis, then please let me know down in the comment section below. I am also probably at some point this year, I'm hoping going to go on a journey of finding out if I've got ADHD. That's another thing. I feel like the beginning of my 30s is like finding out medically and sorting out medically me. <laughs> like I need to like fix up, look sharp. That is a big thing in the back of my mind and it's a big thing that I wanna find out ASAP. So I will eventually share my journey with that as well. So yeah, I'm sending you all love. I hope you have a really beautiful week. I look forward to seeing you next week. I'll see you all soon and um, I'm sending you all so much love and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.